Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm sorry I just need to add this bit on. The review of the Chrysler 300C is coming up uh, any minute. I just wanted to let people know two things. Uh, unfortunately, the owner of that car passed away uh, a week after I did the video on it. So, um, this is quite a long time on now. Um, this is actually May. I think this was the video I was recorded back sometime in March or February. Um, and the family have asked me to either sell the car, uh, help them sell it, or uh, buy it myself. And they can't be bothered with the hassle due to COVID and having the loss of uh, a family member. So I've actually ended up buying the car off of them. So keep watching. There'll be more videos to come. Project 300C. I've got a few things lined up for the car, um, but they'll come in another video. I just thought I'll put a little tribute out tribute out to Tim. He was a fantastic uh, customer of ours, a good friend. He he, uh, he gave me bits and bobs he had lying about. He gave his money for me kids and th like things like that uh, over Easter and things. So, yeah, um, I would just like to put this one out to Tim and let you know to keep watching. There will be more content on this car coming. I'm just getting a little bit... Uh, What's the word? I'm, I'm losing space now. I've got the uh, the L200, the Corolla, the 406, and now a Chrysler 300C V8 Hemi. So my missus isn't going to be very happy when that uh, car gets uh, picked up over the weekend. So now I'm just going to cut into the review. Bearing in mind this review, the car was valid just after, uh, so it does look a bit grotty, but Tim hadn't been very well. And I think the car had stood since something like July or June, uh, when it was MOT'd, so forgive the car for being in a bit of a mess. It does actually look okay uh, when it's done. Also, please leave a comment below. It's got all the Bentley stuff on that I'm not keen on, and if you look on the review in the boot, the original Chrysler grill is in there, and I think I've seen some little wheel caps uh, in on the floor in the rear. Let us know in the comments below. Shall I put the Chrysler grill back on, or shall I leave it the way it is? I'm surprised I put it on a forum the other day and people said leave leave it. I don't know. I thought people would hate it. I'm not keen of it with the Bentley badges. But let us know. Now I'm going to cut, cut into the, uh, the review now. And thank you for watching. Bye. Hello and welcome back to the channel. I just thought I would do another very different review of a Chrysler 300C. But with two little differences. One is a bit of a comedy feature I think. It's a Bentley. And second of all, have a guess. Yeah, it's the V8 Hemi. 5.7 V8 Hemi Magnum, as they call it. There we go on the back. 5.7 litre Hemi Magnum. And by God, this is a good engine in this car. And this car, even though it looks, you know, full on gangster, believe me, it can move. So in the fuel gauge, I doubt you'll be, I think you'll be into single figures if you are pushing it round the doors. So anyways, all in all, we'll talk about the Chrysler 300C. I personally think they are a very good car. Um, you know, it's got, this one's got the old Bentley touches on. Um, I'm not, it's, it's, not a, it, it's everyone's idea of what they want. It's their own car, they can make it their own car. But personally, I don't think there's nothing to be embarrassed about having a Chrysler badge. I think they look nice standard. But anyways, this car's been slightly customised. So it's had some extra... I'm not fully into these things, but it's had some f uh, different... Uh, like spoilers put on the bottom of the bumpers, same at the bag valance. Um, but these are a very nice spec car. They, they use a lot of Mercedes uh, items that are actually quite good quality. It drives absolutely lovely. It really does drive nice, this car. Um, you know, you've got all of your optional extras on this one. It must be, it's obviously a top spec one. You've got your headlamp washers, bison on headlights. You've obviously got all the bling bling chrome on them. Um, you know, I'm not sure if those wheels are original or not. I have no idea. Um, but they look okay. Somebody's obviously painted the brakes and things. They haven't got no big Brembo's, what you would expect, but most American cars, they're only designed to go fast in a straight line, and there's not really any corners, so, you know, that you don't tend to find many American cars. These are, I bet you these brakes are probably the same as what's fitted to the V6 and the diesel. But that's just the way Americans are, for some reason. Um, you know, you get your chrome door mirrors. I think all this stuff's added extra. I think they've been added on. I'm not sure if they're, op if they're optional extras. Um, but I tell you what, when you drive this along, 
you do get some looks some positive some maybe negative but either way I, I love a car like this I, I think whether or not a car's good or bad if it can turn heads to me it's worth it it's worth every penny so you know it's had these this bit added on i think the guy was wanting to get some more aggressive looking exhausts put on the back i really do think these are a nice looking car i think if you get a diesel one they're a good cruiser if you get a v6 one they're a good all-rounder but let's face it if you want to have a a gangster looking car you need to have a 5.7 v8 but it will all do all got to have a bit of fun obviously this isn't my car i haven't really i've only driven it round the doors but i bet you if you could have a bit of fun with this car i bet you could just light up the rear tires just pulling away from a standstill um it's got i think i've looked on the figures it's 330 brake horsepower i'm not sure on the uh, torque figures and stuff but it's an automatic it, it sounds beautiful uh, it, it's it sounds very standard it, it i think of, i'm not i hate loud cars but I would love to hear one of these with a, a non-resonated exhaust. I think it would sound fantastic. So, anyways, we'll get to the business end first before we go into the interior. We'll have a look under the bonnet. Again, on my channel, I don't do fully valeted cars unless I've valeted them myself. I review cars as the stand. Most of them, like I've mentioned, are customised cars. Um, I just review a car totally standard not when it's all been polished up and all the rest of it i like to review a car as it stands i've just realized two seconds one of the little bonnet stairs have come loose so i'll just put that back into place and stand back so i don't get my head battered there you go it would be nice like the old-fashioned american engines to see uh you know the proper like rocker covers with the chrome on and everything but of course like everything else these days you just get plastic but there we go 5.7 litre v8 I'll, i still do think for an engine cover that's nice cleaned up a little bit that's lovely hemi just to remind you you've got a v8 hemi beautiful i really do think this car has got some potential full stainless exhaust non-resonated not too loud but just to hear that lovely v8 burble yeah i think it would be great i really do think it's a good looking car you know i i must admit i think i prefer the chrysler on there but that's everybody to their own and at the end of the day the, the world would be a very boring place if everybody was the same and everybody liked the same things wouldn't it so i like to see a little bit of difference I'm not going to go into the bull. I, I suppose I'll open the boot. Um, like you say, it's got all parking sensors. This one's got, I think, a factory option sunroof, which we'll have a look on the interior. I'll just pop the, the boot, or is it the trunk, the Americans call it. I wonder how many bodies you can fit in here. Oh, there's the original Chrysler grill. Um, so, yeah, you know, um, I'll just cut back in on this. Sorry about that, I should have cut back in. So, yeah, I think you could probably fit three bodies in the back of there. But any gangster would want a review of that car, wouldn't they? So there you go. Just put that shut. We'll have a walk round from the other side first. Again, the car's not empty or nothing. It's just got somebody... I've got made sure nothing in there's personal belongings, but they're beautiful leather seats. Heated seats. If you have a look in the back, you know tinted windows as you want I'm surprised obviously in the uk it's illegal to have your front windows uh, tinted but in america you could just imagine limo black limo black and half of them i've seen in america because it must be legal they have a black line running across there and across the bottom and you've barely got a little slit to look out of that's full-on gangster spec i would say more chrome wheels actually no spinners remember those on pimp my ride spinners or whatever they were called but still pretty cool car i think i just like i just like different cars you know nice bit of chrome along the wood it's not something you often see only the americans do that as you can see back seats you know a lot of space there that's it's pushed all the way back nice armrest again your mercedes parking sensors there's a lot of mercedes stuff you'll notice in here so we'll jump in and we'll check out the interior. When I find the key, I 
I think I've left that in the workshop, but I've just realised there was a spare key left in this car. I'll just find out which one is the right key. That one, right. So, we'll put the wind up because it's actually gone really cold. Very slow window. The car hasn't been getting used, so we've got to give it a bit of... Uh, I'm going to start it up because uh, it, otherwise it just beeps and beeps and beeps like all American cars do. So we'll start from the dashboard. Love that. I love a traditional pointer clock with the nice Chrysler emblem in the back. And when you put the lights on, goes nice blue colour. Nice. I like that. I do actually like that. I, find, I think that's a nice dashboard. It's had... Um, some aftermarket thing put in. I don't know. I don't know if it is aftermarket or not because if you look on the speakers, you've got your Boston premium audio. That's probably the equivalent of something like Bose in America. Um, I've never had the sound system on, so I can't tell you. It's got a typically American uh, climate control system here. I'm actually just going to turn the heating on a little bit because I'm first time I've been cold in a while. Heated seats in the front, dual zones, ones dual climate control on each side as well. Your aircon. I like this system. A lot of people might say, oh, a, I like this idea of climate. I hate these ones where there's screens and everything. It's just, it is automatic, as you can see, auto, and you can put these on auto, and you can put the fans on auto. So I like the fact how you can split them up between automatic, like position of where you want the air directed. You can manually control the air conditioning. The heated rear screen is just a normal switch. Your circulation button is a normal switch because half of these Audis and stuff, you've got to go into like hidden menus just to access the, the, the circulation and stuff like that. You know, it's nice when you're driving towards some kind of like smoke, somebody's been having a fire, you can just quickly bang, put it on circulate and then once you're through it, off. I like this because you can just control the fan like normal or put it in the auto or you can, you know, same thing with the heating. All right, it's too hot in here, right? Turn it down, turn it up. Simple. I just like that. It's it. It. I, I must say, I like that system. You don't need all these stupid screens and touch button stuff. It's rubbish. That is good. So you've got yeah heated seat for the passenger. Obviously, fully automatic. With has it got them? No, I thought it had panel shifts, but it doesn't. So you know, you've got your normal. You'll notice this. It's just lifted straight out of a Mercedes, as you can see on there. You change through the gears. Um, that's very Mercedes. Everybody will notice this stalk. Let's just move the steering wheel. There's your Mercedes stalk with the white bars on the end of the white bars on the indicator stalk. So, you know, there's a lot of Mercedes stuff in here, which isn't a bad thing. Obviously, you've got your four electric windows, child locks, your, your, your door locks, electric folding mirrors. Nice feature to have, considering this car's about as wide as a bus. So, we've got them. By Xenon headlamps as standard. You've got your front and for front and rear fogs in your dashboard illumination to dull it up and down. And if you I've just realized if you do it one more click, that's very American, isn't it? Actually, that does all your interior lights. So as well as dimming down the dashboard, if you give it one extra click. Hmm, that's good. Not a lot of indication there though to say that's your interior lights. I, I bet you most people don't even know that's there. Because obviously there's no button up here. That's just for the sunroof. So that is for your interior lights. But if you put it on with your headlamps, it acts as your headlamp. It acts as your dashboard illumination. So that's a bit stupid, really, because then if you like your dashboard illumination on low, every time you want your interior lights on, you've got to go messing on with your dashboard illumination. Very American. So your foot and feet, obviously you haven't got headlamp adjustment because it's uh, by Xenons. It's got sensors on the headlamps. You've got your boot release and very again very mercedes I'll pull the door you've got your handbrake which isn't a handbrake it's on the foot it's like a parking brake and you use that to release it i don't like that idea but with it being a manual you just step uh, sorry an automatic you just put it in the park um cruise control as you can see on and off um you've obviously this is like a sat nav unit you've got your esp which you can turn off and on which I would imagine would be very interesting turning that off in the wet. Rear wheel drive, 330 brake horsepower. Hmm. I think we'll leave that switched on. So I'm going to actually turn the engine off because this thing is just drinking the fuel, ticking over. It's probably used the same amount of fuel just ticking over there as what I could. You could probably go to, you know, 30 mile round trip in a diesel. 
nice again chrome mixed with wood lovely look i love these seats i think it would have, would have harmed maybe to have hemi i'm not a big fan of that but it has got the can you see it the chrysler emblem i like that but a little stitch bit underneath saying hemi i think the only thing is this is a hemi v8 and bar having it on the engine and a sticker on the back there's nothing in here that tells you that you're in anything um different which is a you know like a little hemi i hate tatty stickers and stuff normally but a little reminder like hemi or something like that or something in the seats it's kind of just been a little bit of an afterthought i think um yeah but you know the interior is what it is and do you know what it is when you're driving this car there's no rattles, no bangs, no knocks. It's very nice to drive. And do you know what? It's only got 46,000 miles. It's next to nothing. Not even run in. Um, I don't know a great lot about these engines. I couldn't even tell you if it's got a timing belt, timing chain, how, what problems I've got. I've got no idea. All I know is it is absolutely silent when it's running. It is lovely. Really, really is a nice engine. You've got all your storage areas. I'm not going to go through people's uh, belongings, but that is huge. You can fit like... You know, a two litre bottle of pop in there. You know, cup holders. American have to, a car can't be made if it hasn't got a cup holder to put your big McDonald's or something like that, a Burger King. Uh, God, my I shouldn't put on accents. Sounds ridiculous. Um, you know, you've got your general ashtray area, pull out like storage little slot here. But this car's so wide, like you know, like I'm in a big big armchair like that, and you've got this massive area here you know you can have both people can have the arm on the armrest and you wouldn't be touching so you know you've got your uh, automatic dip dim mirror you've got your rain sensing wipers but i think this car has got automatic headlamps but there's not a switch for it so i just think that you have no choice i think sometimes i don't know I don't, I, it might not even have automatic lights but i've just noticed there isn't an option for that you've got all of this malarkey here obviously you got your, like i've mentioned you got your cruise you've got your um like see our like music settings and stuff and god knows what which you can go on but i was going to demonstrate going through this but it just beeps and beeps and beeps for no reason obviously f fuel low distance to empty how many i'm getting concerned i need to drive this car home tonight and it's down to there god that's worrying um you know i'm, I'm wanting to try and get some figures up here ah oh, there we go average miles per gallon 11.5 wow that's, uh, you know, these cars are nice, but you're going to have to have deep pockets to run it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's all your stuff through there. It has got the sat-nav options. I like this idea with Chrysler's as well. You've got a compass, so, you know, you know what direction you're facing in when you're driving. I don't know, I, I just like that. You've got your temperature display, which is in very much American and Fahrenheit. Um, you've got your full tilt and slide sunroof. But with, you know, with the, with the sun blind on. But with most customers' cars, with it not being my car, it is fully electric. I ain't going to touch it because if it gets jammed, I'm not being responsible for uh, breaking it. So, yeah, um, you know, you've got your door lock system on the left-hand side. That's very American as well. And uh, let's have a look up here. Oh, that's nice. Little mirror. One bit of a light on. Um, we'll start it up and we'll go and have a listen outside. Again, it's very quiet. Very, very, very quiet. It's not what you it's not like an old-fashioned American V8, you know. We'll go on the back and listen to the exhaust. You can't even hear that, can you? That's just it, it's not a it's not a loud it, it's very quiet cruiser. And I'm not joking when you when you're up to speed on a road, it is silent. There's no sound comes from that engine. And there's no noises from, you know, the suspension. It's a road noise. It's a very refined car. And if you listen to that. Silent. That's lovely. To be quite honest, if I was to have this car, I think what I would fit would be, um, what you call it, uh, like, 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 like a, what's the word, like an exhaust system with a valve in. So you can have it nice and refined and quiet like this when you want it. And then just at the flick of a switch, you can have a growling V8. Uh, I do believe, I read a comment, I think you can get up to, up to 60 brake horsepower extra on these by putting a straight through exhaust on them. I don't know enough about them to comment any more than that, but uh, yeah, that sounds lovely. We'll give it a little rev. It is up the temperature before anybody says anything, but I'm not going to rev it hard because it's not my car and I respect other people's uh, items. I'm not like that. Let's have a look, see if I can, can I get that there? No, we're going to have to just look at the thumb there. Are the 
like you see. No real noise. If you listen there. Get a slight little grumble at the back and that's it. That's all I'm gonna be doing because uh, there's not any not much fuel left in it. So yep, yeah, there you go. If you like these kind of videos, like and subscribe, leave a comment below, I'll just come around. If you like this kind of content, leave a comment, like, subscribe, uh, you know, tell your friends about it. You know, it's just basic reviews that I'm doing, nothing fancy, the cars aren't valid. I'm just showing you the different cars that I see on a day-to-day -day basis. So, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.